us. So the, the message, of course, as you see, is the business principles of the Bible. And um, that's one of the reasons I've opened this call up to the world, really, um, because I think it's so important. We sometimes get bottlenecked in our faith, especially, and, and we, we think there's something wrong with making money. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from, except I've heard over my life, you know, um, money's the root of all evil, but that is not what it, the Bible says. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. But you know, the Bible, whether you share my faith or not, is filled with, um, you know, just nugget after nugget after nugget of what we need to be successful not only in life, not only with our faith, but also with our business. And so I, I wanted to take a, a time to kind of build a just a, a mini series, if you will. I don't know how many of these there will be, but um, just to kind of open our eyes to some principles in the Bible that can help all of us. And, you know, again, the, there are threads of the Bible in your everyday life. Thank God there's still threads of good in the world. If you removed all that, we would uh, you we wouldn't recognize life um, as we know it today. But there are threads of the Bible in every single part of your life. Um, there are things that you do, things that you say, even uh, cliches that you might call them, like a drop in the bucket or by the skin of my teeth or things like that. They actually come from the Bible. So whether you understand that you're living in throughout some of these principles or not, you are. And so I'm going to call attention to some of them, you know, including, you know, you every day, if you write a check, anytime you write the year, you're actually acknowledging the year of our Lord. So, you know, again, I'd say all these things just to say to my friends who don't share my faith, this is not a shoving my faith down your throat. It's an understanding of some principles that could be vital to your success. You know, the Bible, again, it's, a, it's the ultimate instruction manual, at least it is for me. And it provides really a blueprint for every area of life, including business. And again, I think that's a place where people of faith kind of shy away from. For some reason, we're hung up on being successful and we're hung up on talking business. If you doubt that, just look at how, how churches will ruffle up if you even mention business in church. It's kind of crazy, you know. But uh, business and money are essential in life. We can't survive without making a living. Everybody's got to do that. Well, at least, you know, before there were, you know, programs out there to supply food and housing and things like that for the needy through the government, you wouldn't, if you, if you didn't work, you didn't eat. And so all creation was right, wired to work. And since the, the Garden of Eden, we've all been wired to work for our food. So that's a necessary part of life. And the Bible is the ultimate authority on creativity. And creativity, frankly, is monumental in our success. I'm going to be talking a little bit about that. But so far, uh, we've gone through secret number one, which was, is God wants us to be obsessively preoccupied with the needs of others. And again, that's not just a kind of like feel, oh, I feel sorry for them. Oh, look at that street person. Look at that beggar. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about being laser focused and preoccupied with the needs of others far and above ourselves, you know. And it's when we can get outside of ourselves and in business, when we can get outside of just counting those checks, that's when we see success. You know, sometimes I bring up, I have a, a real estate background, 18 years, and there was a, a book that was put out there called The Millionaire Real Estate agent and it really it interviewed the top producers um, in the country you know and their habits and what they did to make their living and bar none every single one of them said I don't look at the money until closing I look at the doing the very best that I can do for my buyer for my seller I don't focus on the money so until we get out of that guys you're not going to see true success you're going to see a little you know 5a check a 6a check whatever you've got coming in every once in a while you'll celebrate and cash it and forget all about everything everybody around you. But you know, you're not going to see true success until you can basically die to yourself and be obsessively preoccupied with the needs of others. And number two, a secret was we're wired to work. Nowhere does it say that at some point you're going to sit back, you know, smoke cigars, drink pina coladas and, and go out on a boat somewhere. And then there's nothing wrong with enjoying your life. But you were born for a purpose and that purpose never dies. That only dies with you. You know, it, it's not like it, it, you know, the Bible says, well, at age 63 and a half, you can stop doing doing everything and just relax. It, it doesn't work that way. You were wired to work and we need to work. We're probably always going to work. Secret number three was we have to be willing to change. You know, we can't go through life uh, just being stuck in status quo and never changing and growing. We have to change. We have to change for ourselves, for our loved ones. We certainly have to change for our business and evolve as it evolves. And secret number four today is going to be that we need other people. We just don't like other people. We don't just don't want to hang around with them like we did um, at our recent event. That's not what we do. We need 
other people. And you know, your best moments, the, your best accomplishments in life has always been, has always involved somebody else every single time. It doesn't matter if it was just you that got an award at work or you achieved some kind of major goal or you uh, won a marathon. It really doesn't matter. Your best moments and your best accomplishments in life are always made with somebody else. All of your ex best experiences involve other people. Without others to share your joy, well, where in the world is the place for joy? There's no joy celebrating by yourself, you know, or with yourself. You know, and there are myths about people you'll hear about, you know, Picasso type artists, for instance, creating magnificent masterpieces and they were isolated and alone. And that's just not true. You know, you don't they didn't create it by themselves. They may have had a quiet place to create a masterpiece, but rest assured, there were lots of people behind them creating that masterpiece. You know, they weren't isolated. I mean who who fed them? Who 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 looked out for them? You know, they always who celebrated with them. So everybody and every major accomplishment, every piece of joy involves another person. Isolated humans can't create a masterpiece in life or build a huge business in life any more than an isolated person can create a baby. It doesn't work that way. You can't do it by yourself. You need other people regardless of whether or not you've actually accepted that in your life or not. You know, in the beginning, God created man, and we're very familiar with um, him saying, you know, that man, it's not good for man to be alone. But it wasn't long before God saw that, you know, in Adam. You know, but obviously this truth refers to man needing a helpmate in life. It refers to marriage, if you will. But it doesn't stop there. You know, God, the, the Word of God, and God always has a multi-purpose, you know. And so it's not solely um, a message for the husband-wife type relationship. Later on in the Bible, we read that two are better than one. And we read that iron sharp sharpens iron. So the idea of not being alone is not limited to just the relationship and marriage, for instance. It also applies to every area of life, especially business. You know, many business partnerships or investment deals involve more than one person. You know, I've, I've had the privilege of knowing some immensely wealthy people in my life, and I can tell you that very rarely did they ever go out in any venture or any investment, if you will, alone. They always had a partnership. Even though you'd look at them, and I look at them and say, oh my gosh, they're brilliant. You know, they have earned billions of dollars. They still, it's not that they can't take a hit, and they, they could easily say, well, I'm just going to do it by myself because then I can make all the money. They don't look at it that way. They know that two are better than one and iron sharpens iron. So they involve other people in their investments in those in those business relationships, if, if you will. So it, it works across the board. It's something that we all have to pay attention to. All businesses rely on people for success. You know, they rely on the partners or their associates and they rely on consumers for their success. And and what you sell, or what we sell, is not nearly as important as the partnerships that we have. You know, not nearly as important as that. We rely on other people and, and we have to look at what we what it takes for us to succeed. Don't be confused by that word partnership, by the way. I'm not talking about a formal business partnership or a joint venture or a joint partnership. I'm not talking about merging your money. I'm not talking even talking about combining all your efforts with another person. Partnership implies that you need other people around you in your business to inspire your creativity and, and to propel you toward your goals. We can't do it by ourselves. We have to have other people. And again, the most important people to us aren't our consumers. They aren't the people that are going to buy the goods that we're selling. The most important people to us are the people that we have in our business. You know, the people that are going to inspire us and be there and create and help um, inspire our creativity. So, you know, we don't necessarily need to follow precise steps of other businesses to be successful. In other words, if we heard of a high technology firm that saw overnight success, we don't need to go mirror that, but we do need to focus on specific business principles that made them successful. And you know, bar none, when you look at any really immensely successful business, whether they're looking at and acknowledging the principles as being biblical or not, that's what they are. Biblical principles worked yesterday, they'll work today, and they will work tomorrow. And when we focus on those principles outlined for business, we will see the power of the tools that we can find in the Bible. The principles will work for anybody. So whether or not you share my faith, again, I'm not judging that and I'm not trying to recruit you, okay? But whether or not you share my faith, these principles will still um, work for you and that will be the only way that you will see long-lasting success. You know, business success requires creativity, doesn't it? Sometimes in our business, I look at the creativity in the mind of our founder, Mr. Oshiro, and I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, the creativity to 
condense our, our, our technology into something that will be on, could be on somebody's countertop. You know, the creativity that took um, a, to creating a patented, you know, compensation plan. I mean, it's unbelievable, right? But, you know, the first form of creativity as an example we have, not to be confused with creation, is the creativity of a baby. You know, regardless of weird science and test tube babies and all the stuff we read about today that makes my skin crawl, really, you know, um, it takes two people to, to create a baby. And their role in raising a baby is no mistake. And it's not a simple process. It's actually an ultimate example of a partnership. How, why do I say that? Well, think about it. You know, a, a certain man and a certain woman were the parents of Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein didn't sprout up. You know, he just didn't come out of the garden a genius. You know, he was he was actually create. It was a creativity of two people. And Einstein didn't become what he became with no help along the way. Rest assured that he had parents that were supporting him and encouraging him and wowed by him. People that came alongside him that made sure he was fed and clothed and supported along his journey. He had partners that supported him, you know, and, and, and ones that didn't get in the limelight and they didn't get credit for it, but that doesn't negate the fact that he had partners along the way. A certain man and a woman uh, were the parents of Henry Ford or Thomas Edison, Benjamin Franklin, the President of the United States, and you, every, all of us, you know, all of us were um, a product of creativity. And, you know, we all had partners along the way, whether we see them as good partners or bad partners. The partners that we had as children, bringing us up into adulthood, helped form who we are today. So, you know, that's creativity as a, as a, as a firm and, and a simple example. But there are many examples of creativity. We, you know, we can paint a picture. Some of us, you know, Ross Rotier was sharing a, a picture he just painted for his grandson, you know. But we can write a book, you know, pray for my creativity. I'm writing a book that will be hopefully ready by our event. But we can build a business that touches countless lives in countless ways. I don't know if you ever stopped to think about that, about how many lives, what's the residual effect of what we do in our business. It's amazing, you know, because we're in a compassion-based business. We're looking at true health, which is physical health, financial health, and, you know, what I call spiritual or mental health. You know, that whole picture, just imagine if you can even wrap your head around it, how many lives we touch just by talking about what we have, you know, um, much less the people that actually embrace what we have. The principles of creativity and all of them, you know, all the ways that we can build creativity are all the same. They all require more than one person. You know, you could do our business without ever building a team, but you can't do our business without other people, can you? You, you can't. You either have to have a consumer to sell to or partners to push you along the way. You have to have a Mr. Oshiro. You have to have a, you know, product developers. You have to have it all. You know, they all require more than one person. And there are three truths to creativity that I want to call out. Creativity, again, requires at least two people. In business, sometimes that's a whole lot more, but it's at least two people. You know, two, uh, not business uh, truth number two is two people need to be different than one another. Imagine trying to create something, you know, just for you, just using you, you know. You would agree with yourself on everything. You would be not inspired or, you know, by new thoughts and new mind. There would be no mingling of your minds. There would be no exchange of ideas, no balance. There's no, uh, there's no real value in having somebody that always agrees with you, is there? They never challenge you. You know, we challenge one another toward great things, whether in a relationship or, or whether we're in a business. So imagine trying to start a business with just somebody exactly like you. You know, you wouldn't see success. Rest assured, it wouldn't happen. You would need, uh, you would be able to offer yourself nothing. Nothing new would be added. Creativity would be very, very limited. So we need other people, at least two people. And num uh, truth number three is creating anything is one of the most exciting and rewarding things anybody can ever do. You know, and you can't do it by yourself. Uh, you know, that solitary artist never really worked alone. You know, who provided him support, encouragement, food, paints, you know. In our business, again, the people in our business, it's not just that consumer you're hunting for. It's not just that superstar you're hunting for. It's not just your team below you that you you should be leading. It's not that just a team above you that you should be respecting. It's everybody. We need everybody. And we can't get through this alone. We can't get the juices flowing. We can't build the synergy unless we gather together. You know, those are the three truths of the creativity. So our true wealth comes from other people and not our own efforts. And the sooner we understand that we need them, and that includes our team, folks, this, the sooner we understand that we need them a lot more than they need us, our whole attitude changes. Our success in business relies largely on how well we communicate with others 
and how well we treat other people. And you know what? In business, you don't get to pick and choose who that is. You know, you guys know that I struggle with a long time with this horrible attitude of, oh, my goodness, you know, where are all my superstars? And, and, I, and I want some normal people to deal with and stuff like that. It was crazy. And that's because I was lacking respect for all the people in my world. You know, nobody comes to my life by mistake. And so I was lacking the respect and, and I was not regarding them for their place in my life. But you know, until we can see everybody um, is, it will benefit our business, that there's a role for everybody. Until we can regard them with that respect, then until we can understand that we need them. And you know, looking at a team, for instance, and saying, well, they're not making me any money, you need to get out of the business, <laughs> because that's not what we're about. They'll, you know, if we nurture a plant, eventually it will bear fruit. And if it has no intention of ever bearing fruit, it'll just die out. But it's not up to us to say people that are showing up, but not, you know, putting a check in our pocket, that is so wrong. You cannot see success if you're looking at other people for how much money they're making you. you. We have to understand that we need them. We need them in every way and not just for how they line our pockets. So when we take two of anything in life and join them together, minerals, substance, and people, they become more than the sum of their parts. So when we bring people together, whether it's in a marriage, whether it's in a business, the end result is something much more creative, much more powerful, and much more substantial uh, financially and otherwise than individuals could ever, ever be alone. Creativity and wealth only happens when we join together. So, you know, it only it, it's only when we understand that creativity and success require at least two people that we can embrace the idea that other people are the key to our success. And again, that's not pick and choose. That's not sitting back saying that one's good and that one's not making me any money. It's a, looking at the whole picture that other people are the key to our success. And it's when we see them in that light, then we understand the importance of treating them with love, respect, compassion, professionalism, and everything else on the good list. It's when we can look at them in that light that they are the key to our success, that we start treating them the way they should have been treated all along. We must look for ways to serve them. Because remember, uh, lesson number one was remember, God wants us to be obsessively preoccupied with the needs of others. Nowhere does it say if they're making you money if they're doing what you want them to do, if they're behaving the way you want them to behave, if, you know, if they've helped you reach your rank. That doesn't say that. It says, remember, he wants you to be obsessively preoccupied with the needs of others. So just what are you doing for the people around you? So, you know, are you on an island? Do you like being there? Do you, do you like sitting there? Some people, you know, might think they're more of on a throne. I'm going to sit here and just wait for all these people to make me all this money. And you know what? And to, for those people that I'm talking to in my business, one of the most brilliant things about the compensation plan we have is that you've got to always keep working. So you can never, you're never going to be able to sit on the throne and just watch everybody make you money. You've got to keep moving, you know. Are you attempting to build your empire all by yourself? You know, I hear people say, well, I don't like people. I don't like to leave the house, I don't like to get on the phone, I don't like to get on the internet. Don't look now, but you're probably dead. Okay, you've got to live life. You know, whether you're doing this business or not, you can't be on an island by yourself, and you can't attempt to build anything from a family to a business all by yourself. You know, are you too busy criticizing others to focus on the value um, to you, or you know, on their value to you. Are you are you too busy saying what they aren't doing, or how silly they are for doing this, or how they're stupid for doing that, or how they're you know again they're not making you any money? You're so busy criticizing others that you can't see their value. Because rest assured, you know, one day you will see their value if you nurture the seed. Do you, do you believe that others need you more than you need them? Because that's a mistake <laughs> number one. Is that's a huge, it's a paradigm shift you got to go through. Because believe me, you need them. I need them more than they'll ever need me. So there will be no true and long-lasting success for any of us until or unless we understand that we need other people to succeed. That's the bottom line. We need them. They don't need us. So on that note, I would like to open it up. You guys can raise your hands, and if I've stepped on any toes, you can feel free to tell me I stepped on toes. But I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what you have to say about... Um, about what I shared. Hold on one second. I'm getting my screen up here. 
So I'm looking at the panel here and I'm waiting for raised hands. I'll be glad to open up the lines and get any comments or questions that you might have on, you know, how we need other people. We have to have other people in our lives. That's not just a relationship talking, it's a business talking. And I know, you know, there are probably people on this line that have been trying to roll this thing out solo and it's not going to work, you know. So um, anybody want to pipe in? I see... Brenda, Brenda, you're always the first one. Early bird catches the worm here. Okay, I've opened up the lines. Brenda, you're going. Go ahead. Yeah, I always try to wait for other people, but uh, <laughs> I guess people just wait for me, Lynn. I don't know. Hey, listen, I, I want to share with everybody uh, my experience when I first got into this business. You're talking about meeting other people. When you first get into it as a 1A and, and, and you learn uh, and try to educate yourself as much as you can, the first thing for myself popped up was pride. I wanted to go out there and do it all by myself, all alone. And I was thinking, I don't need Mike, I don't need Pat, I don't need Len. I can. Do, uh, what's wrong with them? You know, I can present this. You know, just like them, or as well as they can. You know, you can study and study and read and read and read. And, and that's not the case at all. Uh, uh, what I want to encourage people to do is, you do need someone else. And right when you think you got it, you can become very skilled at it. You can become very knowledgeable. But it's when the customer sees the other person that, that goes with you to a demo or you three-way somebody, it's needed. It's not so much um, thinking that you're not good enough or you're not smart enough or you're not educated enough. It's about the customer and the prospect seeing that they, this business is all about a team and supporting one another as a team is critical, not only to us within the business, but also outside for the prospect. Because remember, we're here to duplicate this business. And um, Stephen Covey always teaches, begin with the end in mind, one of his seven habits of highly successful people. He's passed on um, since then. But in his book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he, one of the habits is begin with the end in mind. So if we're going to begin with the end in mind, once again, we have to make this business duplicatable. And we, we can't present it as a fearful thing, but we have to present it as something that's simple, easy, and we need one another. So I just want to pass that on to people I don't know uh, who's new on this call, but um, it's, it's, uh, we need to kill the pride there and uh, change, as you taught last week, Len. Right. <laughs> laziness, laziness, pride, and I forgot that third one, fear. Fear. Um, we, yeah, fear. We gotta, we gotta exchange those things out, that fear out with faith, and uh, that pride without uh, submission, and and just go with it. So I just want to encourage people, uh, especially the new people and the people who've been on board for some time. When you get real good, you, you still need a second person for for um, their their skills, their talent, their knowledge, whatever. But anyway, that's my, that's my two cents worth, Lynn. Yes, okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, Brenda. Great points. And you're so, so right. You know, we talk about needing other people for like the, you know, the three-way calls, interacting with people, you know, so that they can, you know, get a dose of other people in the business. It just sort of further validates what we have. And, you know, again, for me, it's about looking at all the team, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, being uh, obsessively preoccupied, you know, I, I'm humbled by so many people who have reached out, people that I don't really know, you know, that have reached out and said, whatever you need for that fall event, count on me. I'll show up early. I'll do whatever you need me to do. People I don't even know. Those are people that understand the importance of people. They understand the importance of, of putting the needs of other people above and beyond their own, you know. It's so humbling. Now, people that I don't even know that are promoting this event out there online, it's crazy, you know, but that's the people that understand the importance of other people. And so we can't succeed in life. You can't have a fulfilling relationship or anything until you understand the need for, for other people. So I've got Mike Cassidy raised his hand, and Mike, you should be open wire now. Yeah, Lynn. Uh Great, uh, great number of, of points that you brought up. Uh, I'll, I'll just reinforce a, a few of them here. And uh, you, you know, if if you look at the the Enagic business plan, it's really not about selling. You know, that, that's what people think when they first come. At water units. I need to go sell ionizers, and that's really not the way the the plan is structured. 
you know, the plan, you know, really rewards people for putting together a team of people. Not to go out and sell, but to develop and to teach and to, uh, to be of service to people and basically change lives. And, and that's, that's a real difficult concept to understand. And, you know, when, when I first got into business, I thought it was all about sales, but it's not. It's really not about sales. So we, we use some of the same techniques you might use in sales. We need to have good communication skills. We need to be able to present things, you know, in, in a sensible manner. But, but really, we're about interviewing for team members and finding people that, that we want to be partners with, you know, for, for the rest of our lives in, in the sense of, of promoting this, this mission of true health. So, you know, what, my, my advice is when you go out looking for, for a prospect, you know, the first thing you should be looking for is somebody that, that shares the, the ideals that, that we share about providing service, about, about helping people attain true health, you know, uh, physical health, financial health, and spiritual health. So if we really understand those, and that's, that's what we, we go after, the wealth will come. You know, because there's no way you're going to attain that, that true health picture without being rewarded for it. So um, it's, it's not about sales. That's right. That's an that's excellent, excellent point, Mike, and it's so true that it's not about us. <laughs> you know, again, it goes back to the very fundamental of put your, get yourself out of the equation and be obsessively preoccupied with the needs of others. And, and we've all heard it, you know, not just in this business. I've heard it, you know, people just, you know, just kind of rub their hands together, start counting the money, celebrating how they, you know, convince somebody to do something or sometimes coerce them into doing something. And believe me, those people, they don't see success at all. They see a momentary wave of money. That's not success and it's certainly not fulfillment. You know, we, we have some people that, you know, we've seen over the years of, you know, they'll just come and go. You know, they you know i got to tell you, I think we have a great bunch of people, and I would want to hang out with everybody even if I wasn't doing the business. You know, so if we, if we look at the needs of others and embrace everybody for where they are, always looking, of course, for the people, like Mike said, that are on board with the mission and ready to run with it, of course we want that. But until we understand the full picture of every person, it's like an ant farm, everybody's got a purpose there. You know, until we fully understand that and we love on people and respect them and put their needs above our own, then we can't get there. But it's when we do, when we can pull that off that we see incredible and long-lasting success. So we, it's always about evaluating where we are. And that's one of the things that I love, again, about the, um, the leadership calls that are taking place. Because believe me, they require that you dig deep and look at where you are and where you're not. It's not fun to look at where you're not. I don't like it, okay? <laughs> but it's important for growth to realistically look where we are. So we have to understand that we need other people. If you're struggling with needing other people, you know, then I, then I, my hope and prayer is that you'll, you'll work on that. And, you know, it's, uh, it's difficult sometimes. It's, and, and I would say, I guess, because of where I come from, it's difficult when you're solo in this business, you know, not just so, and it's even more difficult with your solo in life. You know, some of you don't have your mates working the business with you, you know, and, and, but you can go home and talk about it. You've got somebody saying, go for it. You know, but when you're totally alone, and many of the people on this call are, you know, when you're totally alone, you don't not, not only don't have somebody in the business with you, but there's nobody at home cheering you on too. That become, You have to work a little harder and be sure that you're surrounding yourself with people. You need other people. And there's no way around it. But, you know, there's nothing that cripples us. You know, we can't say, well, I don't have anybody and I'm not married and I don't have any money and I don't have any whatever. I don't, whatever your excuse is, there's no excuse. You just got to keep moving forward and understand what it takes to be successful. And once you understand it, if you're willing to apply it, you will 
be successful. So I don't see any other hands up um, at this point, so I just hope that what you heard today was a blessing to you. This call is being recorded, so if you want to pass it on and share it, then feel free to do that. I want to especially thank our guests that joined us today. It's great to have you with us, and I hope that you can see our, our team dynamics, even though, you know, we're not in the same room. We're, we're using technology to, to, to our benefit, right? So you guys go make it a blessed day. I'll see you next time, and thanks again for being on our call. Take care. Bye-bye.